thing that binds everyone that builds a wood surfboard together is a love of surfing and a love of the sea and a love of the structure of surfboards. And um, when people build a board, they're very much uh, keying into that culture and that love. I'm Patrick Burnett. I make wood surfboards in Komiki, Cape Town, under the brand label Burnett Wood Surfboards. Uh, what I'm trying to do here is, is make, make wood surfboards that are beautiful, that are fun to surf, that are long lasting, and that are environmentally responsible. Um, I think what I love about making surfboards out of wood is that they are really, really beautiful. Each and every board is completely different, individualized. Um, and the other thing that I, that I also do here, apart from making boards for, uh, for customers, is to run courses. So I have people come in uh, to make their own surfboards and I facilitate that. Making wood surfboards is something that goes back hundreds of years in surfing culture. Um, wood is, is very much a part of the, the kind of retro movement in surfing as the, the culture looks back on itself. And so it's instantly recognized as a historical material. Uh, the boards I make are hollow wood surfboards and those surfboards were invented in the 1930s. Um, uh, there's a guy called Tom Blake who was a Californian who's been credited with that. And he made the first hollow wood surfboards and it was, a, it was really a, a leap forward for surfing because um, for the first time boards didn't have to be solid uh, and they weren't as heavy as they used to be. And it led to the introduction of a whole new group of people into the surfing culture. Um, so somehow the wood has, has survived that journey from the introduction of foam surfboards in the 1950s when wood became uh, a material that was no longer used. And it's now seeing, I think, a reintroduction as people start to look for alternative materials that are more environmentally responsible to use in making surfboards. Where I begin is I, I'll design a board on, on a computer using a computer program and um, I have a range of, of models that I've developed over the years. I've probably got 10 or 12 um, different types of boards, possibly more. I get the rough short timber uh, and I cut it, prepare it, plank it, strip it. Um, I build the boards here, I shape the boards here um, and they are glassed and finished right here in Komiki, Cape Town, South Africa. Making wood surfboards is, is very labor intensive and that is probably one of the reasons why it is not mainstream. It's a craft-based activity and I think one, one needs to look towards the, um, the things that you get out of it which are not necessarily tangible in the sense that you don't see them on a, when, when you buy a product on the, on the shop uh, shelf. You, you kind of see a product and you buy it and you go away. You don't see what goes into it. And I think wood surfboards are valuable from that sense in that you you get a sense of, there's a real sense of craftsmanship, there's a sense of, 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 of striving for perfection to bring out the, the beauty in the wood. There was a guy, that, a photographer, that took a, um, a piece of wood and he set up a camera over it and he took a, a block plan and he planned and then he took a picture and he planned and he took a picture and he planned and took a picture and he took thousands of pictures and then he set them all together and the movement of the grain which with each block plan resembled a moving swell so it's a beautiful kind of analogy between wood and, and waves and surfing there's a natural energy there of a tree growing of ocean swells moving It's about getting away from it or getting the dust washed off you and getting in the ocean and feeling that energy. 
And I think when you're sitting out there on a wood surfboard with the swell moving underneath you, you'll understand that. You know, you'll look at the grain on your surfboard and you'll think, wow, that's like, that's beautiful, man. You know, I'm out here in nature and I'm on nature. And there's something, yeah, you can't really articulate in that, but it's very, very beautiful.